Okay, 7.5 nuclear fusion. This is the very last lesson for our unit, actually, for, for the whole energy unit. The last bit of energy that we're, that we're going to see here. The next unit is going to be sound and waves, and I think that's pretty cool. So, here we go, nuclear fusion. It's a lot like nuclear fission, but where fission, we were splitting apart atoms into separate pieces. Fusion is the opposite. We take two atoms, smash them together, and they become one. So, we've got a little bit of information here in terms of stable atoms, right? We've talked a bit about when atoms are stable or when they're not. And the picture to the right here shows um, the binding energy versus the mass number. And the idea is basically just showing that iron, iron 56 here, is the very most stable element, the very most stable atom. And everything else there, you can see that um, the lower it is, the less stable it is. Um, and that's the, the main idea here, is that everything wants to move into this region of being the most stable, having the largest binding energy. And so our heavy nuclei over here, the ones with, um, with a lot of uh, protons and neutrons, they want to split into smaller atoms so they can become more stable. They want to go in this direction. And that's the fission that we saw in the last chapter. But the other end of it is that the light nuclei down here actually also want to become more stable. And what they want to do is they want fusion. They want to merge with other atoms so they can move up here and become more stable as well. So that's what we have here. Heavy nuclei want fission to become more stable. Oop, to become... more stable. And light nuclei want fusion to become more stable. That's our heavy nuclei and light nuclei. And um, that's what we're dealing with now. We're dealing with these light nuclei like hydrogen and helium that are going to want to fuse and, um, and merge with other atoms. The last bit of information here, this is just sort of separate, but for this lesson, we're going to be using a different form of C squared. Here, we know that C squared is equal to 3.0 times 10 to the 8 squared. We use this in our equation, E equals mc squared. But there's actually, um, we can use a, another version of it. We can say that that's equal to 930 mega electron volts per unit. And this is actually going to save us some work. Because remember, in the last lesson, we had to convert each time. We had to convert from units to kilograms, and we had to convert from joules to mega electron volts. Here, we don't need to do that, because we can just use this version of C squared. That handles all our conversions for us. We go straight from atomic units into mega electron volts. So we're going to be using that, and we're going to go straight into a, a little problem here to, to try solving. We want to determine the energy released when a deuterium atom fuses with a tritium atom to form helium according to the nuclear reaction equation below. We want to use the given masses. And so this is the same idea. We need to find our mass defect, and then we're going to find our energy. So we're given all this, these masses here. Our mass defect, delta m, is equal to the mass of the deuterium. Right on the on the left here, we have the two one that's deuterium mass d, um, plus the mass of our tritium. Minus the right side, so minus the mass of our helium. Minus the mass of a neutron. And our mass defect that is this energy here, so that's sort of taken care of. Our mass defect is the mass of the left side minus the mass of the, left, the right side. We can plug in our numbers here, so we get 2.0140 plus 3.01605, oh, 01410, I'm sorry, um, 3.01605 minus 4.00260, minus 1.00867. This gives us a mass defect of 0 0.01888.
units. That's our mass defect, and we want to find our energy now. That's equal to delta m c squared. We're going to use our new version of c squared. So the delta m is 0 0.01888, and c squared is 930 mega electron volts per unit. And this gives us an energy straight away 17.56 mega electron volts. Okay. And I'm going to tell you that fusion actually produces way more energy than fission. That might not seem right to you because we just did this equation and we said, okay, this little fusion reaction gave us 17.56 mega electron volts. And if you remember from last lesson, we were looking at numbers more like 39 mega electron volts or 181.9 mega electron volts. The numbers were larger. But what's different is that this was using a very, very small amount of mass. We have just two hydrogens. That's, that mass is tiny, so the amount of energy we get out per unit mass is huge compared to fission, where we're dealing with atoms that are already very, very heavy. So um, fusion is a very, very efficient way of getting energy. It is what powers the sun. The sun is a big burning ball of gas. Well, it's, it's all powered by fusion. And all of the energy that we have here on the Earth is derived from the sun. It's, it's all, we take it in by, by radiation from the sun. The plants convert that by photosynthesis into chemical energy, and then we eat the plants. So th it's very, very important, this fusion energy. We've actually looked at trying to harness it and create fusion reactors here on Earth. We'll talk about that at the very end of the ETER project. Okay. So that is a goal here, controlled nuclear fusion. How can we actually reproduce this on Earth? Obviously the sun is a big boiling burning gas, uh, ball of gas. We don't really want to have that on Earth because we would probably destroy the Earth. But there are ways to control it. First off, I'm going to put here proton-proton um, chain. So this is a type of fusion reaction that happens in the sun. This is, this is how the sun is powered. So what happens is it takes four hydrogens, one, one hydrogen. So it just takes four regular hydrogens and it fuses them together to get a helium. So four hydrogens become one helium plus two positrons. plus energy. Lots of energy. And that is the main reaction that's happening in the sun. That's what gives us all of our heat. So this is what happens in the sun. Okay, and um, it's not just the sun. All sorts of stars are doing fusion reactions. and. That's how we get all of our fancier um, elements, all the ones that are higher up in the, the periodic table. If it wasn't for fusion, everything would sit at very low, like we'd have a, a bunch of hydrogen and helium. But we're fusing all that hydrogen and helium, we're fusing them into more and more complex, larger elements. And that's how it's produced. So stars fuse particles together. to create higher elements. And that's where all of our higher elements come from. You might have heard the term that we're all stardust. Well, that's sort of the idea. That is all, all of the stuff that we're made up of comes from these stars sort of just mashing protons and neutrons together. Okay, so um, we have the proton-proton chain. We have one other type of nuclear reaction that's kind of cool. It's called the carbon-nitrogen-oxygen cycle. So I'm just going to write this out for you. It's, you don't need to really, you definitely don't need to memorize this. I would recommend knowing the proton-proton chain, but just take a look at this one. It's kind of cool. So we start with regular carbon, plain old carbon. And then what we do is we absorb a proton. So we go 7, 13, so we go up to nitrogen. So we've absorbed a proton there with fusion. Okay? And then what we do is um, 
with some decay, we decay down to 613 carbon. So what we did was we converted one of those protons, that we converted the proton that we just picked up, into a neutron. We kept the same mass, but we went from positive to... So that was with some beta decay. Okay, and now we're going to pick up another proton. So now we're up to 714 nitrogen. So that was by fusion. We just grabbed a hydrogen, smashed it in there. And we're going to pick up yet another proton. So 815 oxygen. Okay, and now we're going to um, convert one of those protons into a neutron again with some beta decay. So we go back down to nitrogen. And then we're going to finally have some alpha decay. And what we get out is 612 carbon plus 2,4 helium. And so this is kind of cool because we started with just a carbon-12 and we ended with a carbon-12 plus a helium. So this is how we produce helium. Or not we, but I mean this is how helium is produced through fusion. One of the ways. You can see it's also produced by just mashing four hydrogens together. But this is a, a called the carbon-nitrogen-oxygen cycle, and it's, um, I think it's pretty neat. Okay. So the last little um, couple points here are that if we wanted to create a fusion reactor here on Earth, which is something that we're constantly trying to do, there are places that do it, but nobody has gotten it to give more energy than it takes yet. So the amount of energy it takes to keep it going, to keep this, this fusion reaction going, it actually costs more than the energy that we get back out of it. So obviously this is, this is a problem, because if we could create a fusion reactor, just like we have nuclear fission reactors currently, if we could create a fusion reactor, we would get way more energy out of it than anything else we know about. And it would be really, really clean energy, because fusion doesn't have any of the drawbacks of, of fission. It actually gets rid of radioactive waste. It's, uh, it's wonderful, so it would be perfect if we could do it. Um, one of the ways that we try to do this on, on Earth is using magnetic confinement. And the idea is that um, we can sort of keep all this, this, uh, this plasma contained by using a magnetic field and sort of keeping it suspended inside there. So the, the only thing I'll say here is that um, in fusion, the, um, the substance plasma is really hot, is very hot. And it needs to be confined so that it doesn't escape. Because if, if we just let all that plasma, like, like what the sun is made out of, if we let all that, all that plasma out, it would, it would you know, be very destructive. So it needs to be confined, and, and we're doing that with some sort of magnetic shields that, that are pretty cool. And the last thing I'll say here is that there is um, a project to try to get a nuclear reactor going um, that produces useful energy. It's called the ETER project. You can look it up. This is an experimental fusion reactor. Um, there was a while where Canada was going to be hosting the ETER project, but then the foolish Canadian government decided that they didn't want it and it went somewhere else. Um, I was really disappointed when that happened. But anyway, you can look that up. It's pretty cool stuff. And that is the end of energy. I hope that you've enjoyed this unit.